uh, you're a little bit of a fib teller, Dusty Henshaw. You're telling some I tales. I prefer to use the word blatant liar is what I read. <laughs> I, was <laughs> trying, I was trying to be nice. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding. Myself, Big Ron Partlow. Of course, I'm here with the producer, Scott McNally, and Dusty Hanshaw. How's it going today, guys? I just think it should be the producer. It seems much stronger. What did I say? The producer? The. The is weak. He is the. I'll I'll keep that in mind. Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. There you go. Ring the bell. Do the notification thing. It helps us out. And it, it really makes a difference. The algorithm yeah. stuff really makes a difference, you know? You guys comment and stuff like that. We, you know, Scott and I go on there a little bit, try to comment back or like some comments, keep things running, you know? Yes. The also, like it. the bell is the way that you guys know when a new episode comes out. So yeah, a lot of times this stuff gets suppressed. Uh, YouTube doesn't really like a too lot much of muscle. freedom on this too show. Much. Too much, too much mm-hmm. muscle. You know what I mean. Too much too testosterone. Much so they yeah. try to keep that down, keep that on the down low, and then Man if tries you do to suppress. Click the bell. You will. Uh, you'll be free to there check out go. the shows. Yeah. Yeah. The bell equals <laughs> equals your your personal freedom. That's what it. That's what it equals. <laughs> it's like the Second bell. Amendment again. Um, go remember, ahead. <laughs> remember, I am mutant dot com. Go get your ISO surge. Go get your all in, and everyone should be on the gear. Let's so get gear. on the gear. I am mutant.com. Dusty20, Big Ron20. Use our codes. Save money. Support the Live show. Happy. Yada, yada, oh. yada. And then, of course, Think Big Bodybuilding Media, Patreon, Keep a Producer Homed. Thank you guys. For Appreciate it. everybody who's coffee. supporting the channel. I just put out a new question thread. We've got a couple questions today from Patreon, and then we should have a slew of them coming up because I just got a new fresh th- thread. So, guys, if you're on Patreon, fill that thread up with all your questions. If I missed anything, then just post it up there again. We'll get to it. Fantastic. Yes. Hey, do we have any odds and ends before we just kick this off? I saw you have an adult cup of coffee today, like full size. That's cool. Good yeah, job, you. What's. Your West Coast ironed out today. Yeah, I didn't even mean to. I actually thought I had a mutant shirt on, and then I sat down and we hit record, and I'm like, "Oh well, everyone knows I'm with mutant." I'm sure. Yeah. I'll, I'm sure we'll make it through one episode. His code doesn't work this week. In case anyone's wondering, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, fired. You might want to got just, fired this morning, Dusty. <laughs> I'm a one logo guy something now. To talk about. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What was our lead? We had a lead topic there, Scott. Yes, this is uh, from one of our listeners. He had posted this on the last episode on YouTube, and he had said, um, do you guys believe that enhanced bodybuilding can be done relatively safely? I've seen this being debated many times and would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, Thanks for all the awesome content. So basically, he wants to know how much gear can I take and still live as long as I would have normally lived with zero consequences. Pretty much. I hope that's not what he means, because in my opinion, that's... That you, you, you're you're making some sacrifices. You're making some trades here. Yeah, even yeah. if you do it safely. Hmm. I mean, I mean, the safest possible imaginable way to do enhanced bodybuilding and have zero consequences would be like the guy who does one show on fifty megs of Anavar yeah, and like yeah. wins and has a great experience, and then that's it. And I'm then, good. I'm done. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I did some bodybuilding once. You know, like, and those guys are out there. There's a bunch of guys out there like that. I hate those yeah. guys, but yeah. we, we know, we all know them, right? <laughs> and um, and they got out of it completely unscathed, like completely fine. You know what I mean? Everyone mm-hmm. else, I think there's a little bit of a, a little, of, little bit of something, a little bit of something. Yeah, I feel like there's you know? the, the the confusion comes into play because there are people trying to suggest that you do it as smart as possible. So getting your blood work done, yes. like actually knowing the answers, but I don't think that that should be confused with health. Like, so mm-hmm. for example, and I, and I like to list my, my self in something, my throat issue, the reason my esophagus was thin enough to cut was because of the amount of food I had been eating for years mm-hmm. and not understanding how dangerous it was to have acid reflux for a long mm-hmm. time. 
Great point. So literally, yeah. there's an example of bodybuilding being, you know, a lot of people say, you know, as soon as I got sick, I mean, I heard once I came out of the coma that a lot of people assumed it was drugs. I'm like, actually, it was food, but it was mm, bodybuilding. Yeah. I yeah, wouldn't yeah, have been yeah. eating that much food if I wasn't trying to be drastically bigger than my body was meant to be. And you so, wouldn't have ignored acid reflux for 15 years straight because it was just yeah. part of the being uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, that was just part of life. I mean, literally, you know this, Ron. Like, it got to the point that I would wake up in the morning and the first thing I would do is take a Pepsi to just, and I didn't even have any acid yet, but I just knew yeah. if you did that, you wouldn't have it or you, at least right. you wouldn't feel it and you just go on with life. So that to me was like, okay, cool, it's handled. I mean, I took a, you know, I essentially put a Band-Aid on every morning on my broken yeah. arm and then walked out the door, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, I mean, it goes uh, always like, you know, look at my, you know, mystery nerve issue in my left lat and tricep that pissed me off so much. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, you know, like that's that's all nerve compression, tight spaces, things getting too big, everything just gets crowded. So like, you know, it's not even just the drugs being huge can have consequences. Like yep. things that can piss you off like, ah, fuck, I got to deal with this. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know, our, our, our body's meant to be a certain way. Like, you know, where genetic setup is to be, you know, mine's to be six foot one, 185 pounds, you know, and uh, you're, you're saying to nature, no, nah, we're going to we're going to do a bunch of other stuff. Like, imagine if, you know, your genetics lay the foundation of the house. Right. So you have a, a foundation laid to build a house and you build the house. Right. And then you come along and you start adding rooms and floors and extensions <laughs> off to the side and building like a thing that just hangs out over the side. Yeah. that goes out with no support. <laughs> yeah. And and just expect that room to just hang out the side of the house for 10 years without anything cracking or breaking. <laughs> you know, it's like that's sort of it, you know? Yeah. Right. Or like yeah, a hydroponic think, weed plant where you have to tie the branches up so they don't grow themselves to death and snap off. I, I think that's a great question he's asking because of the way we present ourselves often on doing this as safely as possible. But, you know, it, it's funny because I'm obviously in the camp of like, especially after nearly dying, being very aware of how fortunate every day is, things like that. And I took a lot of flack because as soon as I got healthy, alive, I guess, first thing I wanted to do was start training again. And I started growing again. And people were like, I, I thought you, you know, you were, you were Mr. Live Your yeah. Life. And I think where it got confused is because I'm okay with the trade I made years ago. Like, I'm not, un, I'm not confused that my life was shortened from bodybuilding. I don't know how long yet. Hmm. Um, but I think it would be arrogant to assume it wasn't shortened at all from years right. of being like 270 plus pounds yeah and you know i and guess we all hope and... we all hope for the best <laughs> yeah. we all hope that you know we still make 80 or something you know what i mean like i don't know it's uh yeah and but, you know, but it's we not all, a case of I'm sort of um, leaning on technology too <laughs> it's gonna yes. just get better it'll keep getting better there it is know? someone will fix this before i die hopefully yeah, yeah. 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 they'll figure it out yeah. <clears throat> but but to more accurately answer the question, I think the keys are don't base anything on how you feel. Um, I've never had a point in my bodybuilding career where I felt bad. I felt unhealthy. And I've had a couple occasions where I had to adjust my eating and things because my blood work told me to. It was like, huh. oh, it wasn't terrible. I mean, I remember that the, the two times I was a little unhappy with some of the numbers. I was like, oh, OK, what supplements do I have to start taking? I wasn't using already. Are yeah. there any change in the diet? I got those things back in order. And the reason I point that out is because I felt fine. So if I wasn't brought up, you know, under like Dante's tutelage and like understanding that we did blood work all the time, I would have just kept going. There'd have been no adjustment based on the blood work and that's where people have problems I, i'm sure you guys have all had someone say do i have to take blood work i don't want to waste that'll be the word i hear all the time three hundred dollars oh, if yeah. it comes back fine and i'm like if it comes back fine which is our goal that's a well spent 300 bucks to know everything is good yeah how about this yeah. too just to kind of throw in another angle you know can you do it and stay healthy 
I think, in, in, you know, so often on any podcast you listen to, the answer is it depends. Am I trying to compete with Ron and Dusty? Because if so, the answer is no. You know what I mean? Like what I'm going to do True. to keep up with Ron, which I still couldn't do, you know, it, it, and it, even if I could have, I wouldn't have been able to do it for the length of his career. You know what I'm saying? Because something right. would have failed with my health before that. But it's it's an individual thing, you know? I mean what does it take for you to compete are you a guy um that can get on stage naturally you know or with very little did you did you already have like a, su a successful career competing naturally in say classic because i know plenty of guys that do compete naturally in classic at the state level right and then they decide mm -hmm. hey i'm going to go to a national show and i'm going to start some gear or did it take you a gram and a half or two grams to win the state level show? Because the answer is going to be different for everybody, depending. Because the and that's where I think we we need to really look at. Hey, am I really cut out for this? You know, am mm -hmm. I really cut out for this level? And that you know, it all does come back to genetics at the end of the day. So there there mm -hmm. is that aspect. I think it's an individual answer. You know, true. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, the spectrum I've seen on that is just unbelievable, you know, like I was mentioned the guy, you know, that guy that does does one show for fun yeah. on 50 Migs Anivar because he doesn't like want to take any shots. Like, I, kn I know that guy and he won overall, you know, <laughs> all his yeah. friends came, cheered him on. I was happy, you know, like um, I helped him. Right. And it's just that was his goal. And and you're like Jesus. Some people just breeze into this and like just smash it, you yeah. know. And and you know he could have gone on to you know I mean he, he had decent structure. He could put a lot of size on and gone on, you know. So and we know those guys that you know doing the local state show and they're you know a hundred kits of GH deep. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Gary Turner and, uh, was just on one of the shows recently. He just got his pro card. Congrats to him. He got his pro card in the yeah. Masters division. Absolutely peeled. Worked with Dom Cardone, and they freaking nailed it. He looked incredible. And he also said, like, okay, I'm done. I'm retiring here. He was like, I literally had to pull out all the stops to get this Masters Pro card, you know, and, and, and compare him to, you know, I can't name names, but I've worked with people who have said, hey, I don't want to run Trend until after I got my Pro card. I want to kind of save that one. You know, right. and we've known people that haven't run a lot of stuff or anything to get there. So, right. yeah, Gary Turner versus this other guy, you know, that it, it's going to be a different answer. His yeah. his post, by the way, was phenomenal. Uh, it was shared up and I loved seeing somebody because Gary's always puts out good posts. Like, I feel like he's he's a smart guy. Like when you read those of you who actually read captions will enjoy Gary's captions. Um, but what he wrote on the on his retirement was phenomenal because that was essentially how he announced that he would never compete again is let me talk about my pro debut that's not happening. Hmm. And then he listed why and the, you know, the sacrifices his family made and all that stuff. And it was awesome to see because, you know, most people fall into the trap. Right. Now you're a pro. What's it going to take to make to the next level to be smart enough to see that? You know, and he built a hell of a following being oh, yeah. that 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 guy that was just giving it everything he had to get the pro card, you know, and yeah, I, I loved seeing it. I mean, but the but the post was awesome because I'm like, man, nobody says it. Nobody just says, like, are you kidding? I'll get murdered. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so Gary, Gary, I'm with you on being retired and getting murdered as a pro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely with you on the being retired thing. Getting murdered. I was <laughs> <laughs> so, it was a good topic you know I mean? a good topic i think yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah. are asking that question and i think a lot of people are still figuring it out for themselves you know if you're really mm -hmm. invested in bodybuilding you know what does that mean then if that means that like yeah it would be unhealthy does that mean that i should stop you know or or, or does that mean i should in my opinion then you know enjoy the level you can get well, to I, and, I remember and, you know, take that to the as far as you can. You know, the the, uh -huh. the Michigan State Championships can be your Olympia. Yeah. You know, if that's yeah. if that's your level. I remember I had a friend once. Um, I won't name names, but he ate very clean all the time, and he always had like, you know, vegetables with every meal, and he was like all about his like micronutrients, and he had all the supplements. He was ahead of the curve. He was the first guy I knew that had the 
the row of supplements, like we're talking like 40 bottles that he right. took out of every day, right? And I remember just being like, man, this is a lot of, you got a lot of effort going into this. And he goes, yeah, he goes, Ronnie, I try to be as healthy as I possibly can so that I can take lots of steroids. <laughs> 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 and there it is. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. It was good. Yeah, uh, it was good. Yeah, yeah. He was healthy too. Beautiful skin. Looked great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. radiant. Ra very radiant human being. If we could, if we could stop using words like "looked," you're, you're making it seem past tense. Like he's no longer here. Yeah. Um, oh no, he's, he's still, <laughs> still, right still, up to the end. Doing great. Right up to the end. He looked awesome. Yeah, he's yeah. dead now. now he died but... a few years later. <laughs> <laughs> too many steroids but anyways yeah yeah so um speaking of too many steroids apparently <laughs> according to some of the i guess there's still message boards uh, and according to the to them uh you're a little bit of a fib teller dusty handshaw you're telling some tales her to use the word blatant liar is what I read. <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to be nice. <laughs> that was, uh, you mean, you obviously didn't read them. I mean, I got sent a bunch of, uh, a lot of people sent me like links and they're like, you gotta, gotta go defend yourself. And I'm like, why? <laughs> for, for, first of all, I actually didn't know anyone went on message boards anymore. Like, I thought they were just they over with. No, they're <laughs> there. I didn't even. I actually wasn't aware that it was still like a thing that would be like currently happening. You can't post so anyway. direct links to uh, gear sites on social media. So there's yeah. <laughs> they gotta stay alive for a reason. They got to stay alive for a reason. I guess I thought that was all on Reddit or something. I don't know. I'm yeah. behind the times. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So anyways, but like what's funny about it is I, I miss message boards and so does Donna. Apparently she's mad. Um, but uh because of the fact, what I used to love about message boards was, like on Instagram, I could say anything I want. And if somebody disagrees with me, I just delete them. I'm like, bye. And like, I got my little protected area of people who listen. Whereas message boards, I used to remember when I was on there as a kid, if somebody did something stupid, they would just get annihilated and no one would stop it. You yeah. know, they're just getting beat up by a gang of people for their stupidity. But um, anywho, yeah, no, the, 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 it was quite amazing because I had a few people reach out, including Dante, and he's like, man, I just wish you'd go on and comment. And I'm like, well, number one, I'm already a liar, so I'll just be lying again, apparently. Right. Um, but I did send him the screenshots that I had sent you, Scott, uh, of my correspondence yeah. with Chris and the doses and stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was very funny because it kind of goes on to what you were saying, Scott. Like, I know guys who are much better than me who took less. Hmm. Um, I know guys who are much less than me who've taken more. And that's the, the thing that people really struggle figuring out. I know, Scott, you told me that it was something you didn't believe until you coached a guy who had absurd genetics. And you were like, oh. It made sense at a certain point. So I understand. It's interesting because I, I read, you know, I, I checked out Professional Muscle. And, which mm -hmm. is a great message board and shout out to Lats. He's such a good dude over there. A lot of good guys over there. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I, it, I, I get uh. it because I had been there at one time and, 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 and I had to go by what worked for me, what worked for the people around me, the result, the results that I saw. And it wasn't until I really started coaching a lot, meaning like, I got to see a cross section of a lot of different people. And for the most part, yeah, it would take multiple grams to do what you did and for right. an extended period of time and probably a risk to health. But for people that are cut out for it, it doesn't. You know, like mm -hmm. I mentioned in the last segment, I mean, I know guys firsthand that I've worked with who have said, I, I, I don't want to use any trend yet. Like we're talking mm -hmm. 500 tests, 400 mass was a pro was a cycle to win a pro card. You know, like that's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. And, and, and that was like cycle number three. Than that. <laughs> and that was like cycle number three. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of all time. So, yeah. So, yeah, I get it. And it wasn't until I've actually seen it firsthand that it really did make sense to me. So, yeah, right. that's my two cents on it. Yeah. yeah. Another thing, too, that um, I think gets skipped over is like, you know, let's say people say, hey, Ron, how much trend did you use? And I said, well, you know, for the most part, I saved it for the last eight to 10 weeks of the prep. 
sometimes the last six, I think I even did a few times. And, you know, I usually used about 300 milligrams. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember going to 500. And I remember that I, I felt terrible. I remember feeling super edgy and, and, and actually thinking, oh, this is like I've crossed a threshold where I don't like this. Mm -hmm. So if someone now says, uh, oh, Ron says he only used 300 trend, he's a liar. I know he used 500. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. I, I used 500 for like one prep for like several weeks and I never did yeah. it again. So there's a, a, the way that Ron's lying says he used 300, but I know he used 500. So no, 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 that's not how it worked. Yeah. I right. did like 24 shows. I did not use 500 <laughs> train at, at any, but maybe one of them for six weeks. So it's like they don't, they think the physique is built on this number they heard, but they don't right. get the time span or how long did they actually take that many drugs? Did they just try that for a cycle or two? Like what were their actual cycles like over the course of a decade? What were they right. actually doing? You know what I mean? You might know a guy that takes 20 I use a GH for one prep just to, you know, shotgun it because he thinks it's going to make him look like Dennis Wolf. Yeah. And then he never does it again. He goes back down to four to six because he's like, ah, it was pointless, right? right? So then you say, oh, that guy used 20 I use. No wonder he's so big. So, you know, he did that like one prep for a couple months and he never did it again. And he was a bodybuilder for 20 years. It's not what made his physique. Right. So you have to I look at like the, the big the big picture of doses. Yeah. I think the funniest thing for me <clears throat> following it was the realization <clears throat> that what people think is normal is so high now. So when yeah. I said I took eight IUs of growth, I mean, when I bumped up to eight, like I started gaining weight during prep. And I was like, holy shit. Like it was the first time I was impressed with growth. I was like, all right, I see what this does now. Cause it was undeniable. Like the, my, I was getting leaner, the show was getting closer, and I was getting heavier. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Now, granted, I also remind people in those same moments, everything during a prep is perfect. So my eating is flawless. I'm doing everything I can do for the show. And then we've added, I'm on the highest doses of everything I ever am and the eight years of growth. I was stunned when people were like, there's no way that was all the growth he took. I'm like, how much money did you think I had? <laughs> American growth. Well, here's the other thing, too. You said that people got hung up on you growing on 200 tests, I think it was, uh, in an off-season. But at the same time, you were like, hey, but I ran about two grams into a contest. And why would you – Why? so my question – and I didn't, I didn't comment to anybody. By the way, I should mention, too, that was a minority – by the way, oh, like yeah, a no lot of people was. really enjoyed the show, you know. And this was drugs right. and stuff, by the way, uh, with Dave Crossland. If anybody wants to go Shameless back plug. and, and check it out, plug. yeah, same oh. channel. <laughs> so same channel, same same place. So, but why would somebody say, "Oh, I only took two hundred and then lie about that, but then also say, "Hey, I took two grams and eight eight IU." You know what yeah. I mean? It's like right. I don't I don't get that. That plays more into what Ron was saying too, though. Like. So when you say that you spent the majority of your time on low dose, first off, I never went below 200. Like Ron used to go off during times in his career. Oh, From yeah. 2010 until I quit bodybuilding, I took 200 milligrams of tests a week permanently. Um, and there were times it bumped up, you know, 400, 500 for short blasts. Like I wasn't trying to go up, you know, 20 pounds just in prep. But the majority of my off seasons, because it's only a year between shows, was cleaning out and getting ready, you know, because people don't realize how long we would prep. Ron knows this. Like, I start a prep 20 weeks out, but if I'm doing two shows, well, that's 26 weeks by the time we factor in both shows. How many, how many weeks are in a year? I'm yeah. on for half a year straight at high doses. This isn't really complicated to figure out. Um, and I mean, I don't like to draw too much attention to negative things. Like, like you said, Scott, the majority of the review is really strong. But the reason I think it's important to answer is there are some people who are maybe struggling with understanding and they're not fighting it. They're not saying, oh, you're a freaking liar or whatever. They're just, mm -hmm. they don't get it. So I'm hoping that some of them will just see it because mm -hmm. like we stated in the show on parts of people missed, a lot of people, they see what they're looking for. So... 
they hear me saying, I don't, you know, I had to take two grams of drugs coming into a contest and compete as a super heavyweight and then 270 at my last show. And they hear me say, I have bad genetics. And then they just cut the conversation right there. Well, I say I have bad genetics being a good professional on stage bodybuilder. I have wide structure. You know what I mean? My hips are wide. My muscles don't billow out and come into tiny little joints. That's what I mean by having terrible bodybuilding genetics, you know, but I'd be a monster strong man. I'd be gigantic at my height. So born to be big, not born to be a bodybuilder. And that's where people need to ask themselves, who are you? Hmm. You know, what is your physique and stop trying to make it someone else's because there's no amount of drugs or training style or perfect diet that gives me a pretty physique. Physique is ugly and it's big. And so for me, it's very simple. I've always had the mentality. I tell my clients the same thing. Don't chase other people's talents. Okay. Yeah. I am big and it's not pretty. What's the best way I can win? Be as big as possible. And hopefully that will outweigh what's next to me as far as right. first and second place. You know what I yeah, mean? Play to your strengths. Yeah. yeah. And that's a, that's a thing that people really struggle with. And that's why, like you said, Scott, they're chasing a carrot that's not designed for them. You know, I, I, prior to the last few years, I loved basketball, but I just know that's not made for me. So we just, we like it from the seats. It's a lot easier. <laughs> it's a lot easier for people to identify that they're not going to be an NBA pro. It is right. than, than be a pro yeah. bodybuilder because of the idea that if I do take more than I can become, you know, mm -hmm. and then that goes back to the first question. Can you do bodybuilding and stay healthy? Well, can you? It's yeah. an individual question. Well, right. that's why you just like you said, Scott, you got to just, you know, keep your eye on the full process and just make sure to check yourself. I mean, I think that's something we should all do is you take a second. Um, you know, Johnny Jackson and I had a conversation about this once where we talked about things we said in the beginning of our career we would never do. And then down the line, you did. Hmm. You know, like I was never going to use insulin ever. Give never. Me. Oh, not doing it. I would do that in a heartbeat. I need money. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, but, and then of course you get into prep and I find out what it does during a prep and I used it every prep. And the only reason I didn't use it in the off seasons is because Chris didn't write it. It wasn't, I took some moral stance against it. So literally along my journey, I went, there's enough value. It's not as dangerous as I used to think it was. Throw it in. You know what I mean? And those are the things like, like Ron, you said the trend gate made you feel weird. I always took, I think the highest we went was 400 on trend ever. I didn't notice anything bad, but I didn't notice anything great. Right. And I don't really know why Chris pulled it back down in my later shows. It might've just been that he forgot. Um, but on the flip, I did Halo my first show when I worked with JJ Marsh and that shit made me angry. And I was like, okay, that's not for me. It's the only drug I ever took that like, I was like, okay, I gotta be cautious. <laughs> like, right. you know, I don't have a fuse at all. So I was like, okay. And so during my career, I just was like, it, it didn't do enough to feel that way and to feel like you could snap at any minute. I was like, yeah, we're good. Okay. Yeah. Great drug, by uh, the way, if you're not me, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Other people love it. Turned me into sandpaper, but also made me angry. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, Anywho. good stuff. Um, but yes, I, I'm alive. I, yeah, I should go check out. I can't go check out the message board. I don't have time. I'll wind up reading a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he'll be Is that the best message hole. board? What's the best board? Is that the best one? I always loved I that. Know. was my favorite when I was a kid. That was like that was my go-to. If it okay. wasn't all about drugs for the most part now, I would go there still. Like I had so much fun on that board. I spent years there. Skip's board is still up too. Intense muscle. You can go check that out. I said oh, okay. there all the time. Yeah. Okay. All the old stuff. threads are there. Like all of Dante's old original cycles for pennies. You can dig through there for days. If you want to learn about like DC training, that's the place to go. I'm going to go have a browse around the next time I'm <laughs> up a little too late. <laughs> yeah. Hit some message boards. I feel like 2001. All over again. Yeah. All Here comes again. rep 300. Stein yes. In. Yes. <laughs> I remember talking to, I remember messaging with Tom Prince and oh, like, man. like the old, oh man, what a good time. Yeah. The old Underrated, days. Bro. What, uh, we got some questions, right? 
We've got a bunch of them. And then I know, Dusty, you have some over and unders and stuff, too, don't you? Yes. So you guys remember uh, last week we did like the 10 best or the ten, the only 10 exercises you need, okay? So we have uh, 17 Jane Newman had a follow-up for us. And he said, follow-up. So he wants one exercise for each body part, starting with chest, back, then biceps, triceps, quads, hams, medial delt. Oh, I don't like that you only gave me one for back. Yeah. That sucks. You only get to do this one exercise, he says, for the rest of your life, Dusty. Okay, I'm changing my, my vision then now because it's based on what I like to do. Because I'm not a pro anymore, so I can just <laughs> do what I want. So that's easy. Um, okay. All right. Let's let's start with chest. We'll all we'll all go. Ron, what's your chest movement? Low incline dumbbell press. Good choice, Scott. Like standard to high dumbbell incline press. You guys love the dumbbells. Dumbbells are too. Oh late. yeah. Um, I'm doing just a barbell incline, thirty degree. Good to go. Okay. With a straight bar. Yeah, I know. Crazy. And gravity. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everything on my body hurts just thinking of a straight bar. <laughs> I actually did that on uh, on Saturday because Tegan drugged me to the gym, and there was only it was only open for like 45 more minutes, so I was like, I'll just do chest at the same time. So I just put like 225 on an incline, and I was like, I'm just going to do like four sets with this and see how it goes. I was stoked. First set, I got like 27. I was like, all right, that's good. Really? Yeah. Then the second set. 22 <laughs> then the third set 16 i was like "Ooh, wow <laughs> it peters out quick <laughs> like, <laughs> oh i would have petered off worse if i got 27 set one i would have got five set two yeah i was dying I'm like, I'm like i thought to myself i'm like all right we're gonna get like 24 on the second attempt oh i i have nightmares no. <laughs> i have nightmares that i'm gonna be placed in like some sort of situation where there's like I don't know, like bad guys or like terrorists holding me hostage. And to save the world, I have to bench three plates. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone assumes I can do it. Everyone's like, big Ron's on the case. Yeah. He's just got to put up 315 and we're all going to be okay. And I'm sitting there, beads of sweat coming down going, holy fuck. I think my shoulder might pop out if I do this. I hope I don't care. Oh, back. God. Oh, Jesus. What about my left elbow? Oh, man. Man, that's this saved the world? I don't know if I could do it, boys. Everyone you have like to risk your shoulder alive. and your elbow for the world. Yeah. With a straight bar on a flat <laughs> bench. A bar. Yeah, flat <laughs> bench would be scary to me all, no matter what bar. I you wake up, I'm in a cold sweat. Emily's like, <laughs> Emily, Emily's like, are you okay? Let's oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> go pace around the house. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. So all right, well, so what's your, what's, your, what's your back movement? We'll try not to save the world with this one, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, the way I think of it is if we only get one movement, like I like to make sure there's always something in there that is like hard. You yeah, know what right. I mean? I don't want it to be like a hammer row. I mean, not right. that hammer rows aren't hard. It's the majority of my workout is chest supported stuff. But I think if you only get one back movement, I would probably do like one arm dumbbell rows, I think, because they're kind of the most complete. Like they're not a pull down, but they're a little more stretched than two arm rows. You know what I mean? Right. Valid point. Because, you know, you want to get that stretch in, and I don't know. Yeah. I, I just think that might be the, the best option if you're just looking for, like, overall hitting everything. And then there's that's, still some lower back and some core and some grip and, you know, the whole bit, right? That's my jam, too, is dumbbell, single arm dumbbell row. And you can do all sorts of variations with that. You yeah. Dead yeah. stops. You can keep the elbow in real higher. nice and close or, yeah, out wider. So I'd yeah. go with a dumbbell row. If I had a second choice, then I would do probably some type of a, a, a pull down type movement, something in there. Yeah. And I could yeah. probably do most of what I needed to with those two things. So, but I'd take the, yeah. I'd take the dumbbell row for sure. I like your guys' thought on the dumbbell row. I can't use it because I wasn't going to say it. So I'm not going to say that. But I do like as I'm thinking about like all the different ways you can do it. Cause you know, I don't know if you guys have seen, I like doing the ones where you're, you hold the bar opposite of everyone and then you pull out way to your side. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. elbow out to the side, but I was just going to go with a traditional barbell row. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason I'm not deadlifting is because my hamstring movement is an RDL, so we're, we got that covered. Okay, right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Okay, so I wanted to get to that right away so nobody was confused. Okay. <laughs> I got my deadlift later. Makes sense. And, and what what is your guys' uh, hamstring movement then since I just changed the subject? That would be it. The stiff yeah. leg deadlift. You know, just backing out of mm-hmm. a rack, down mid shin, all glutes mm-hmm. and halves, flat back, flex the glutes. Yeah. Man. That's a tough one for me because I, yeah. I, I get, I'll get low back issues going too crazy with it. And I did a lot with the hamstring curl. Like it was, I really did build my leg up, but then I didn't really do a lot for the glutes with that. So I guess I'm just going to have to have like the white guy butt and have good hands still, you know, for the rest of my Fair life. Fair enough. I, I, you wouldn't have to twist my arm too far to get me to say seated leg curl. And yeah, seated yeah. for the rest of my life. Yeah, I knew definitely that. seated. Yeah, you know, definitely yeah. seated. Not not prone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had to pick yeah. one, yeah. Follow, follow. Uh, yeah. Let's see what what's next. Quads, quads. Uh, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good point. Well, now I'd pick a belt squat. Jesus, I could do a lot on a belt squat <laughs> with no loading of my spine. You know what I mean? Because right. I'm trying not to load my spine as much. Um. Or a or a pendulum or or a hack, but yeah, I would say, me. I think I might be able to do the most with a belt squat. Okay, I was gonna say leg press because in case my back was messed up, I could still do it. But I forgot about the belt squat. That would be a good move too because I could definitely, even if I had back issues, you're not loading the spine. No, you can still I've been stand doing up. All sorts of like foot stuff with it too, like just playing yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah, you could kind of like cheat it a little bit too, as long as whoever is in charge of this isn't watching. You know, with your stance, get a little bit of you know, a little bit of <laughs> lean back, lean back a little bit. You know what I mean? As long as he's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, in in defense of the belt squat, most people cheat on and don't know. So I guess you're yeah. Go. yeah, yeah. Plus, um, you can self spot. You can self spot. So that's a nice touch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm of course sticking with the Atlantis pendulum. There you go. There you Come go. On. That is good. I one. got specific on who it was too, because theirs is the best. It just is. Okay. End of story. Um, like let's see. Triceps. Um. Well, I think dips would be a great choice because you get a little extra pec mm, value yeah. in there. And uh, I always, I remember one of my coaches once. He's like. Have you, he said, he, he goes, I've met a lot of Olympic gymnasts. I guess he used to train at a gym where there were all these Olympic people coming through the building. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was like one of those, like, you know, sort of sports centers. And, uh, and he goes, I never saw a single Olympic gymnast who didn't have great triceps and none of them do press downs. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> valid point. And I was like, <laughs> valid point. You so, make a yeah. good argument. That's a good argument. I would yeah. go with the, uh, I like the dumbbell. Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, skull crushers on an inclined bench. Mm-hmm. That would, oh yeah, but, but I don't like doing those out the gate. So I imagine my workouts are going to start out real light and a lot of warm ups because my elbows would hate it if I just jump straight into heavy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not dusty either. I can't go to 225 skull yeah, crushers. Right. Oh my god. Opener. I, I'm yeah. in pain when I've seen say. his videos of that. I was going to go with the straight bar skull crushers <laughs> to defend my friend Ron because that. <laughs> Exercise threatens him. So I'm like, I got you, buddy. It does. I'll go after that. Go after. I'm triggered. That shit. I'm triggered yeah. by your straight bar Olympic bar skull crushers. <laughs> so, uh, and and this will be a fun one, I think, because it'll probably be different for once. Biceps. I think pre just a like an easy bar preacher curl. Right. I love those. If you do yeah. one thing, yeah, easy bar preacher curl. You know what I mean. I just love, love yeah, those. You can do a lot of damage with a preacher bench. I love it. You don't even need that much weight. Yeah, I do dumbbell I, when I do those. I don't do, do you? Easy, the easy bar. Love it. Yeah, love it's easier. Dumbbell. It's easier on my elbows. The the dumbbell mm-hmm. is. I like that. Yeah, too. they're great too. We could even do that. That's fine. I just feel like my elbows are constantly trying to slip out to the sides because my shoulder moves so t- this the mobility in the shoulder so bad. That yeah, I can't keep them pinned like they're supposed to be. Now that I'm smaller, I can do it better. Oh, but it oh, used to be fast. like it used to be a lot more awkward. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Scott? How about like a like a almost like a cable concentration curl 
where you're standing a little away from the machine so you can actually get your arm out in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And kind of out in front of you and down, kind of pulling toward you like that. I like, I like those, and those are pretty easy on my elbows too. That would be like my. That's generally like my starting out bicep movement. That way, okay, the elbows get good and warm for whatever else I'm doing. So, are you grabbing a low pulley and you're kind of bent over? Are you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, I'm just doing a regular cable curl. I love. It's funny because you know I had that whole spiel about uh, loving just using free weight, and if you ever watch me train biceps, only thing I do is cables. Like I love the, the uh, only thing that works for me. I I love the the two pulley and the like. Mm-hmm. Both pulleys are kind of behind you, so you're yeah, curling like forward. against the stretch. Yeah, yes. the stretch kind of stretch loaded. Yeah, those are fantastic. Yeah. We do we do those almost every bicep workout. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. We have the most Phenomenal. amazing follow up question here. This totally Perfect. ties in because it 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 contradicts like literally everything we probably just said here. Good, so, and then we'll lie. It's perfect. Follow up question uh, for your ten exercises: Would they be the same if you were on your way up, striving for that pro card? If not, what would they be? So, how would these exercises vary? Any of them that you would do different? Well, I guess if you only get one, so most of them would be the same. The only thing yeah. that might change is my, you know, my shoulder exercise. I don't know if 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 I might pick something. You know, if I was if I was like twenty five again, I might pick a different one because I I used to love dumbbell shoulder presses, but I wouldn't pick them now. Yeah, you know what right. I mean. Um, so there might be a couple things like the belt squat might just be hacks or something like that. Yeah, but for the right. most part, the rest like the most of them would probably stick. Yeah. You know, yeah, your rep yeah, range just change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the impressiveness of the lifts. <laughs> All right, what else do we have here? Um, oh, just kind of a, a mention here from Michael Devereaux. He said, um, "I saw that mutant on a mission at Ultra Flex, and that place looked incredible." So that's out now, right, Ron? Yeah, that's the episode that out that's out now this month. Um, it's uh, me at Ultra Flex in Rotherham, uh, training with uh, Cuba. And nice. his training partner Mark, and uh, yeah, it was it turned out great, and you know, really good feedback on it. So I I appreciate all the positive comments. People really seem to like that one. You know, Cuba's Cuba's got a lot of people that like you know wanted to see that one as well. So it got good views. You know, that's cool. We got an episode of uh, uh, Muscle Minds coming out with him and Meg. Uh, we had them both on oh. talking about okay. the training and stuff. So that'll be coming out here soon. Okay, cool. Uh, Dusty, Jim McDonald has one from Patreon for us. He says, uh, for it's just bodybuilding. So what is really the right amount of pr- protein for someone who is looking to grow? It seems to be 1.5 to 2 grams per pound of body weight is like the USDA recommendation, um, if you know what I mean. It feels like that's what the science and the small, non-freakish people say. I'm thinking it's more like three grams per pound. I'm not um, freakish, and I've eaten that much protein consistently. And I've never eaten that much protein consistently, so maybe uh, I'm just being a conspiracy theorist. So should we be eating more? Should we be eating 11 grams of protein per pound of body weight, Dusty? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's funny that you, uh, that you said that because I, I was – so I sent Scott my diet from back when I was showing him my, my drugs um, recently, uh, Ron, and his first response was, whoa, that's a lot of protein. Yeah, I didn't even comment about the drugs. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> my diet was attached to it. So It was like 10 ounces every meal. Yeah, right? I do. Was that so what every, was? I'm looking at it right now. Um, the training day – Breakfast was 16 ounces of egg whites. Then meal two, three, four were 10 ounces of chicken apiece. Meal five was 10 ounces of flank. And meal six was another 16 ounces of egg whites. So I was always a relatively high protein guy. Um, The peak for me was actually in 2011, I told you, I was doing 16 ounces of cooked salmon for meal five every night. Um, But that being said, I don't like to use the terms per pound of body weight because it depends on how fat you are. So you got to be a little cautious with that. Um, For most people, I think they'd have digestive problems if they ate as much protein as I did. 
So right. just depends. You know, I mean, you, you got to watch digestion, you know, and, and I think you can get away with probably a gram and a half per pound of lean body weight and be good to go. So I, uh, <laughs> I think the wording of his question was actually incorrect there. He said that the USDA recommendation for normal people was one he, and a he half. He was joking. Two. He was being sarcastic. Yeah. yeah, he was. Oh, saying, okay. He was saying like that's the way all bodybuilders. That's like the bodybuilder oh, version yeah, 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 of. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I yeah. didn't. I didn't. I didn't get that when you. Yeah. I started typing in. What is a USAD recommendation? Point yeah. um, zero three. <laughs> so yeah, um, I I've done like you know I remember when I worked with Chad, he had me on like twelve ounces of meat per meal. And wow. Like, stuff like that. So I don't know what my protein was. Like was it five hundred a day? I mean, yeah. I don't know. But I I always went with the one and a half grams per lean pound. So I always said, well, if I'm going to be 250 on stage, for example, right. then I would go 1.5, and I would just and I would set that as my protein. And I would always dial it back a little bit, like to even 1.3 or 1.4, because I didn't count grams of protein in like my oatmeal and like this and that. And like, so you might get an extra, you know, 25 grams a day from, you know, all your other food sources with your veggies and all that stuff. And so I would, I would always aim that to be like a top end. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't round up. You know what I mean? I would go 1.5 per stage pound is more than enough protein and I'll do the rest with carbs and fats. And then I would go up to two grams per pound if my carbs were like super low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, and it's not like I was thinking in this way. It's not like I was doing like initially to set up a diet, I might do some number crunching. But uh, after that, it was all just like dialing and adjusting the the menu to move the scale. You know what I mean? There are a lot of times where like I wouldn't do math again for the whole diet, you know? Oh yeah. Like that. Yeah. You know what I, I love mean? that. I love that you said that because I'll have clients like seven, 22 weeks into working with me go, what are our macros at? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I could figure it out, but that's yeah. not what I'm doing. I manipulate based on where we started up and down, yeah. but I'm not literally saying like, okay, if I lowered her grams this much, where do I need to move them? Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. You might come to a crucial, there might be like a big decision to make, like, hmm, what am I going to do with this guy? And I might check. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to see what his protein's at. Okay. Yeah. It's right where I figured it was. Okay. Let's set it. And, you know, it's like a lot of that's just confirming, making sure you know where you're at before you make a big decision. Um, right. But it's not all about that. I don't think that way, like, constantly. No. Agreed. I know that uh, I remember, so talking to Dave Kalick when he worked with Stan McQuay. So Stan competed in, I think it was the 210. And he competed in the 212. And and then he competed in the 202. And then he competed in Classic. And Dave said that the main thing they adjusted differently was the protein. That the bigger he was, he was like on 10 ounces. And then when he was in Classic, he was on like 6 ounces. And that was like everything mm-hmm. else was – I don't know if everything else was the same. I, I shouldn't say that. But that was like the big thing. The big the mm-hmm. big difference to get him in shape was the amount of protein that they had in. And then I've I, seen too, like if, if you want to increase your protein. So say like somebody – like say the guys at home are eating 5 ounces across the board right now. And you want to eat more. A real easy way to do that is just next week or this week, start eating 5.5. And I guarantee you, right. like your body's not even going to notice the difference. And then like 10 days down the road or two weeks down the road, go to six. And now you're eating mm-hmm. an ounce more protein per meal. But trying to go from like five to 10 in one, your body's not going to want to take that in. But if you do it real slow, you won't even notice like that half ounce per meal, you know? Right. 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 Yeah. I remember um, eating with Flex Lewis one time at Denny's and he ordered like, I think we had. We had breakfast. He had like egg whites and a little steak or something like that. And it, he goes, how big's a steak? And she goes, I think it's four ounces. And he's like, okay, that's fine. And I go, oh, do you want an extra steak? And he goes, no, no, I'm only allowed six ounces per meal. I live that six ounce life. He <laughs> doesn't want my protein any higher than that. Yeah. Because he's, you know, because he doesn't grow. want to get out of <laughs> yeah. row too much or something and get out of range. Yeah. So he wanted to make sure there was less than six ounces of steak coming because- you know, you see his pictures, that six by the way, life. that he put up this week. He put up some pictures, like just his week, week life stuff. 
And uh, one of them was him with the shirt off with uh, Lunsford. I was yeah. like, shit. Flex is looking it's great. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I watched it. I watched the chess video they did. They did a chess video right. together. And Flex had his shirt off in it for like a bit. So, yeah, I saw some images of that. That's I'm cool. sending it to you real quick, Scott, just because uh, All right. you, you got to see it. I mean, you know, this is like, I mean, I, and I know he hasn't been like this the whole time. He was dealing with his injury and everything else. I mean, and let's let's not forget who he's standing next to. Like, hello, retirement. <laughs> awesome. In case you're That's wondering awesome. how good Flex Lewis is. Right? <laughs> this I is mean, just chilling. I mean, obviously he's working, but like, I mean, come on. I know Flex is a hard worker, but I was, I literally was, I stopped when I saw him. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Come back. <laughs> like, <laughs> nah. And I think, yeah. I think, I think that what, like, if we had to guess what Flex is doing now, 10 grams. I think, I think, <laughs> I think we would have a much more accurate uh, idea than what most other people would think. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I think we know yeah. what's going on there, and that's what makes it so impressive. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's bonkers. I mean, I mean, I think he's living that dad life now, is all Flex is doing. And that's how <laughs> exactly. he's walking, walking around yeah. looking, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's he, might be on the Joe, he might be on the Joe Rogan stack at best. Right. Yeah. He's on the, you know, the optimize everything stack, and that's it. You know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. This is really cool. So uh, you were talking last week, Ron, about Bob Waterhouse, who was at the show. And yeah. Incredible conditioning. I reached out to him. So he listens to the show, first of all. So shout out to him for listening to the shows. And I didn't realize this. One of our listeners, because we were talking about him on the show, uh, said uh, one of the coolest things about Bob Waterhouse is that he is still 20 pounds under his classic limit. I don't know if he still is. But on Fuad's podcast, they spoke in depth about him being a lifetime natural, too. Liar. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, Bob. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I, I, I know that he did get his pro card natural. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I think he was, no, I think this is what he said. He was 20 pounds lighter when he turned pro. I think that's what he said. Is that what it was? Okay. So, so I know he did get his card natural. I don't want to put words in the guy's mouth, obviously. And yes, he does have 20 pounds. That's what everyone at the show is saying. They're like, that guy's 20 pounds under his cap. I was like, that's oh, crazy. That is the crazy. funny thing is he could come in 20 pounds. Like he could literally come in 20 pounds less conditioned and still be in really good shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how skinless he was. <laughs> like He could come 20 pounds heavier. He could eat till he was 20 pounds heavier and he'd still have like striated glutes. But he probably, you know, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Love it. We've got a bunch more questions, uh, but Ron, can we go to some? I know Dusty has over and unders. Can we do that and maybe oh. do another episode later, or something like that, with uh, the rest Absolutely. of the stuff? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So a couple right. of a couple of overrated, underrated, and then we'll get out yes. of this. Now, a reminder for those who don't know the rules: this is based on current world's understanding of how great something is. For right. example, Barbie the movie. The world says it's the greatest thing it's ever seen. And I know this because I made the mistake of going to a movie this weekend and being surrounded by thousands of people in pink. I parked in a different parking lot to go watch a movie this week. You're kidding me. Like, literally, I had to walk across because of that. So, Barbie is overrated without me even going inside. But I give them so much credit because they have men, women, and children wearing all pink to go to a fucking movie. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so on to the real questions, because that's not actually one of them. I just had to make oh, a point so people understood. Okay. Here we go. Cold plunge. Overrated, underrated. Wildly overrated. Thank you. Agree. Overrated. Yeah. Wildly. I, not just overrated, but wildly <laughs> overrated. <laughs> As okay. Astronomically overrated. As Dude, in an is, entire industry built on wildly nothing. overrated claims. Yes. I'm so glad you guys said that. Because the more people I watch doing it, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you? Anyways, I, I literally wrote under it sauna. Because remember, back in the day, a sauna was also magic. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, right. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. also not magic. Okay. Here's one for you, Ron. 
Nebula equipment. Ooh. Huh. They made some great stuff. They had some dud pieces that I wasn't a big fan of, though. But I would say, generally, underrated. Yeah. I... I think that, you know, a lot of people have never trained on Nebula, right? Because they just, mm-hmm. it's a lot of it's just not, it's not in circulation anymore. But, you know, you go to the odd gym and you're like, oh man, they got an old Nebula leg press. I yeah. guarantee I'm using that leg press. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And if I'm training chest and I see an old Nebula press, I'm like, oh, I'm going to definitely use that today. Just got to check mm-hmm. it out. You know, they made some cool back stuff. Um, I wasn't a fan. I, I would never like the Nebula leg extension. For some reason, hmm. mm-hmm. I, I I wanted to because it looked great. It had a center cam on it. I'm like, oh, I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, but I just never liked the Nebula extension for some reason. But yeah, other than that, I think it's generally underrated. Most people haven't used it enough to understand that it was it was like kind of ahead of its time and and you know changed their, the game a little bit. Their horizontal leg press is still the greatest horizontal leg press and or hip press I've ever used in my life. That machine Mm -hmm. was like perfect. And then they also had a seated calf raise, which sounds funny because there's nothing special about it. But I don't know what material they put under your foot, but your foot could not move. It could not slide off ever. No kidding. It was like you were glued into position no matter how much you started like rocking to get the last few reps up. Did did like, their seated that? calf have a rounded yes. toe? Yes. Oh. That's that was awesome. It was awesome. Unbelievable. So, yeah. anyway, sorry, I got excited. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I remember seeing that. Oh god, I had to have it. I would I would say it's a tough one because I'm of two minds here. I think that a lot of people today don't even know what nebula is. And they'll tell you right. that, like, Arsenal is the best equipment. And they're like, well, do you know that, like, Arsenal, maybe some of that stuff came from... A lot of them don't even know that story. I think that in that regard, Nebula is completely underrated. But on the mm-hmm. other side of the coin, if you know what Nebula is and you want to try to buy a piece for your own home gym in the Metro Detroit area that you're trying to build out and you're using Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist <laughs> and stuff like that, and you're trying to get the best deals you can, and then you see something that's available for one minute before it sells for like 10 times what it's worth, in that case, it's overrated. Yes. (laughs) The greatest If you're a bitter home gym builder, (laughs) it's wildly overrated and overvalued. If you're a nostalgic fan of bodybuilding, it's wildly (laughs) underrated. You know that oh, you know the fantastic. guy is it Tom something the Tom the, yeah that made it yeah, yeah Tom Eilerman yeah I would love to get an interview with him and just talk about like how he came up with those designs I don't know how many people would enjoy that but that would be right. fun we to would. talk about yeah yeah <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. three of us would have a great time and maybe if yeah, we yeah, get yeah, in yeah. good with him you know like he'll give me his number and he's got like, oh I've maybe, spoken to Tom many times maybe I talked like to him a, on Instagram maybe he's got like a machine in his garage that he forgot about and he just needs to get yeah. the exact one you, you know? wanted yeah yes. I, I remember one time he sent me some pictures he goes hey I I, I just realized or I, I just took this out of storage it's the last nebula leg press I ever made and it's never been assembled and I've got it sitting in my shed and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to refinish it and, you know, do you want it? And I was at the time, it would have been like, I couldn't afford to buy it and ship it. And cause it's like from a long ways away. Right. Okay. Like, oh, geez. That's, so we already have, you know what I mean? So I, I said, oh, thanks, but I can't, you know, and then I don't know who he sold it to, but would you but have yeah, taken it I today? Yeah, I might have. Yeah. I might yeah. have. Yeah. I saw a Nebula leg press because it, it had never been assembled. So it was brand new. Like it yeah. was never, it wasn't used, you know? Yeah. Like, so yeah, definitely a cool find. All right. That's a good We're one. Do a couple more before we rotate out of this show. And yeah. The next I got a pee. So let's, let's do, keep that in mind. <laughs> slingshot. The slingshot bench deal. Oh. Well, I have to say I've never used it. But I have spoken to a lot of guys who say that it really helped their bench. Yeah. It helped their technique. It helped them get past shoulder injuries and issues. It helped them uh, find their groove better because I guess the groove that you have to use with it, like, is 
like the most proper bench press groove. So if you want to so get the most out of your, it, you're in the wrong. Yeah. Group, so you yeah. Like, you know, your experience. elbows a little bit more down to the sides, right. And, and just mm -hmm. that sort of thing, I guess that's how it works. That's what I've been told. Yeah. Uh, so again, this is all just hearsay from strangers, but, uh, <laughs> he's not a liar, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to say underrated. Um, nice. also, also, I know it's the, well, I don't know that this technically for a fact, but I'm pretty confident to say it's the patent that made Mark Bell a millionaire. So, huh, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's pretty cool idea. You know, he patented that, you know, and uh, and it changed his life. And uh, so I'd say underrated. Cool thing. That's awesome. Scott. I'm in the same position as Ron that I've never used it. When I tore my super spinatus, uh, people had suggested that I get it. And I have the elite. FTS shoulder saver pad, which is basically like this big foam, real dense foam pad that only allows you to bring the bar down to like right here. Yeah, like you clip you clip it on the on the bar, right? Yeah, yeah, it sticks on it sticks on the bar. I like that a lot. That thing had helped me a ton with my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I never tried it. It sounds like it would be, you would think it was underrated, but if you can patent a rubber band, an elastic band and make a million dollars off of it, then I call that overrated. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be different. I, I'm so happy that Scott has completely embraced <laughs> this game now compared to before. He would have been before being like, I don't know. Now he's like, it's a rubber band. It works. It helps people's shoulder. They're recovering well. Accurately rated. <laughs> exactly. Now he's like, I pick both sides, but I give you great answers on both. It makes sense yeah. to me. On what about you, note, Dusty? I, what about I, you, though? I, so for me on that one, I, I literally came up with it because I watched a guy in the gym um, <clears throat> put it on immediately. Right. And then he started using it. But I did ask myself, I don't talk to people in the gym that I don't know um, unless don't they approach me because I don't I don't I don't want to start like a long term relationship where we say hello to each other every day and we talk. Yeah, right. Because I was curious. I was like, is it off? Like, are you helping yourself after an injury? Or are you stupid? Those are the things I was wondering. But if I approached and found out he was stupid now, I've set myself up for life with a new friend. Yeah, yeah. Dumb so friend. I just. I just left it alone and said, I got enough dumb friends. We're going to just leave it. So, right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to stick with you, Scott, and say a million dollars. I'm mad it wasn't my idea. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it for this one, Ron. Okay. Close us out. Okay. Well, remember to like, share, subscribe, comment. And ring the bell. And there we go. And uh, thanks to the thanks to the last five minute crew for sticking around and hearing the over unders. Remember, I am mutant dot com. If it's the last thing you do, <laughs> Dusty twenty, Big Ron twenty, go on there, get your ISO surge, get your all in, and everybody get on the gear. And uh, in case you don't know, the gear is the uh, the essential yeah. amino Fantastic. <laughs> and uh, thanks to Scott, the producer, of course. Think Big Bodybuilding Media Patreon. Keep a producer homed. And uh, until next episode, guys, remember, it's just bodybuilding. <laughs> Flawless end. Flawless end. Ron. I like the inflection there, too, because it can you be like different that? things. It's just yeah. bodybuilding. Just bodybuilding. It's just bodybuilding. It's just bodybuilding. Shut that up. That was great. That's, that's how they figured that out good. how to do the Sparta claim. No this one cares Sparta. about your set. If no one cares about your set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just do an entire episode just completely cynical. Yeah. Just. <laughs> <laughs>